Is the Motorola Moto G9 Plus worth buying in 2021? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. What's up guys, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. We're gonna be taking a look at the Motorola Moto G9 Plus and seeing how worth it this phone is in 2021. So let's get started. This phone has a 6.81 inch LTPS IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 386, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 84.3%. I have the brightness at 100% right now, and I would say it looks really good. The back here is made of a pretty reflective material that does unfortunately pick up fingerprints a little bit, but I do like the overall look of it. With the materials this phone is made of, it definitely doesn't feel cheap at all. The overall design of this phone is a little bit on the thicker side and it's kind of bulky although it's not too bad in my opinion so if you don't particularly like larger devices then it might be a little bit uncomfortable for you to carry around but the plus side to this is having such a large display is going to be good for content consumption if you're streaming videos playing a game, doing some reading, viewing photos, pretty much anything where you have to see details on the screen, this is gonna be really good. But again, there is just that trade-off of having a larger, bulkier phone that might be a little bit less convenient to carry around. But on the other hand, having a much better experience with content consumption and that sort of thing. We got a 16 megapixel front facing camera right here and it is a hole punch camera. So that's really nice. It adds to the modern look of the phone and I think it goes with it really well. For storage, this phone has 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So that is a lot. For the average user, you're gonna be completely fine. Probably never gonna have to even think about storage. If you're more of a power user, you might start to use up a little bit more space, but at the same time, with 128 gigabytes, even if you have a bunch of apps, usually an app that's pretty big, like a game or something like that, is only a gigabyte, maybe two, depending on what you're doing and how much data you have on those apps but it's really not that bad. And if you're shooting lots of photos and videos, you can always put that on the micro SD card. So either way, the space on this phone is gonna be a huge advantage, whether you're an average user, light user, power user, with apps getting larger and larger these days and the system taking up a lot of space itself, it's always good to be on the safe side and get more storage than you think you need. Now there's no wireless charging on this phone, unfortunately. And with a lot of these higher end features that the phone has, you would think that that might be a thing. To add to that disappointment, there's also no face unlock. And that's more of a basic feature that even really low end phones have sometimes. So that is a little too bad, but it does have a real nice fingerprint scanner right here on the power button, which I really like. Cause with this design, you're probably gonna be touching the power button to wake up the display anyway. So having it unlock your phone while you're at it is just really convenient. Let's go ahead and give it a try. There we go. See, I didn't even get a chance to actually turn the display on before it just unlocked. Let's try it one more time. There we go, it's really that fast. So that does kind of compensate for not having face unlock. We do have a quad camera setup here on the back with a 64 megapixel rear camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. This is a photo taken with the rear camera of the phone. I think this is really good quality. The colors are decently balanced and it has really nice details. It's pretty sharp. Overall, this camera is pretty much gonna fit anybody's needs. Whether you're more of a casual user, maybe doing a few social media posts here and there, this is gonna be perfectly fine. This is, this is gonna be more than enough quality for you. And if you're more of a heavy camera user, if you like to get the best pictures possible, well, this does look really nice. So I would think in most cases, you'll be satisfied with the quality of this camera. It's also nice that this phone has an ultra wide camera. I think an ultra wide camera is really useful and it's a feature that in this day and age, pretty much any phone should have. In addition to that, for video, this phone can shoot 4K in the rear camera and up to 1080p in the front. It's nice that a phone at this price level can shoot 4K videos. That's definitely a good thing. 
So if you are looking for a device that's on the lower side of price ranges, but can still shoot really good quality photos and videos, and have the capability of shooting videos in 4K, then this phone is going to be a good option. Internally, the phone's getting 4GB of RAM with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on the phone and it came back with a single core score of 549 and a multi-core score of 1734, so not bad at all. This processing power, especially for this price range, is really up there. You're going to be able to do pretty much anything you want on this phone whether it's web browsing, social media, photo and video editing, mobile gaming, all sorts of things. Now it's not gonna be quite as fast as a flagship phone like a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, but it's definitely gonna be quite a bit above your average mid-level phone. So if you are more focused on performance, then this is a good option. The battery of this phone is pretty impressive too. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery supporting 30 watt fast charging. So you won't have to worry about battery life. I've had this phone sitting on for probably about a week now. It's at 57% right now. And keep in mind that it's been literally over a week since I've charged this phone and it's been on the whole time and it's still got over half its battery left. So that just goes to show how good it is and the fast charging is gonna help as well because if you're crunched for time, you're not gonna be able to sit around waiting for your phone to charge. It's gonna make a big difference. Now, one thing that might be a drawback to some of you is that the software on this phone is Android 10 and I don't know when or if there's gonna be an update. So you will most likely be stuck on Android 10. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because Android 10 is a really good software. I for one really like it. But if you are concerned with having the latest version of Android when it comes out, then this might not be the device for you because I'm not actually sure if it's ever gonna be able to use Android 11. Now in conclusion, is the Motorola Moto G9 Plus worth buying in 2021? I definitely think it is. This phone is super inexpensive for what it provides. Sometimes you can find it for less than $300. Usually it's around that price. But the features on this phone can really compete with phones a lot more expensive. Although it's a little bit bulky, it does have a huge display, which is gonna be perfect for stuff like gaming and video streaming where you're gonna really want the biggest display you can get. And it looks really nice. The colors are super good. Even though it's not something like an OLED or an AMOLED display, they really do stand out and it looks really high quality. The materials make the phone look and feel like a higher end phone in itself. It has a great camera, lots of storage, super fast processor, and a lot of really nice features to go along with it like the fingerprint scanner on the power button. I really like that. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a device that has a really fast processor, a large display, a really nice camera, and a huge battery, then the Motorola Moto G9 Plus is gonna be a really good option. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.